Afternoon. Everybody ready? Got a lot of folks on the stage today, uh, the podium rather. I, I want to thank all of them, uh, starting with Fairfax County Commonwealth Attorney Steve Descano, uh, Prince George's County State's Attorney Aisha Braveboy, uh, my longtime friend, Prince George's County Chief of Police Malik Aziz. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, Sergeant Greg McDonald, who's Prince George's County Cold Case Supervisor and Major Ed O'Carroll, who's the Bureau Chief of Fairfax County's Major Crimes Bureau. Also in the room, uh, Detective Melissa Wallace, Fairfax County Homicide, Detective Jonathan Long, Fairfax County Hom Homicide, thank you both. Our Victim Services Director, Sally Fayez, and our Victim Services Advocate, Stephanie Ramonchuk, is here as well. So thank you all uh, for your attendance. Our American criminal justice system is always at its best when it remains victim-centric. Our commitment to homicide victims and their surviving families drives the work of our homicide detectives and prosecutors. Today, we offer a glimpse into the constant cross-jurisdictional investigative and prosecutorial collaboration that literally occurs in the national capital region each and every day. And as a lifelong NCR uh, resident and uh, law enforcement person, I can tell you that no one does it better than, than we do it here in the NCR. Edgy Adler, 37 years old, of Kensington, Maryland, was found murdered in a parking lot near the Dulles Toll Road on September the 9th, 1987. Prosecutors obtained an indictment yesterday for Charles Hellam, who is currently incarcerated in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Detectives from the Fairfax County Police Department spoke with Hellam in October of 2021. He confessed to the brutal and cold-hearted murder of Edgy Adler. Sadly, both of Edgy's parents died never knowing what happened to their daughter. We hope this indictment brings some sense of closure to her surviving family members and friends. Helen is now serving a life sentence for the 2002 murder of Patricia Bentley, who was also 37 years old when Helen killed her in Fairfax County. Patricia was a single mother who was killed outside, or rather, killed inside her townhome in Chantilly. Helen was convicted of first degree murder. Fairfax County Detective John Wallace investigated that 2002 case and former Fairfax County prosecutor, Kim Balcom, led the way to a conviction. They are both here today. Their hard work put Helen behind bars and we now know even more about the danger this killer presented to the entire national capital region. I wanna thank Detective Richard Danielle and Detective Steve Malewski for laying the groundwork for this indictment with their hard work some 35 years ago. Uh, they too are both here today. I also want to thank the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit for their help in this investigation and the Virginia Department of Corrections. We couldn't have done it without them. We are proud to stand with our counterparts with the Prince George's County Police Department and the Prince George's County State's Attorney's Office. They are here to announce additional charges on Helen for a cold case murder in Prince George's County. I'd now like to introduce and, uh, our Fairfax County Commonwealth Attorney, Steve Descana. Thank you, Chief Davis, and good afternoon, everyone. I want to start by echoing Chief Davis's comments about the significance of collaboration in this investigation. The bottom line is that we in Fairfax County do not give up on the pursuit of justice. And I'm grateful to Chief Davis, Detectives Wallace and Long, Deputy Commonwealth's Attorney Ashley Lander Sutton, Chief Aziz, State's Attorney Brave Boy, the FBI, and our other partners for working across jurisdictions and agencies to bring some deg degree of closure to our community and the Adler family in this case. As Chief Davis mentioned, Charles Helen was serving a life sentence for the tragic 2002 murder of Patricia Bentley and confessed to the murder of Mrs. Adler. Detectives were able to corroborate this confession with details known only to the killer. And yesterday, my office secured an indictment for murder in Fairfax County. We will now pursue a vigorous prosecution of Mr. Hellum. Despite the fact that Mr. Hellum was already serving a life sentence, my team and our partners in law enforcement 
did not waver in our dedication to seek answers and pursue justice in this cold case. Today, my heart is with the Adler family. This indictment will not bring Edgy back. And while her parents are not here to experience this day, it is my hope that those who knew and loved her will have some semblance of closure. I'll now, thank you very much for being here. And I'll now turn things over to Chief Aziz of Prince George's County. Chief. Good afternoon. I'd like to start by thanking Chief Davis, Commonwealth's attorney, Descano, and Prince George's County State's Attorney Brave Boy for their partnership in this important effort. I'd also like to acknowledge the investigators at the Prince George's County Police Department and at the Fairfax Police Department for their dedication as well. We all want our communities to know that no matter how much time passes, we remain committed to finding answers for the families of crime victims. They deserve to know what happened to their loved ones. The suspect, Charles Hellum, has admitted to killing a young woman in Prince George's County in August of 2002. He picked up 19-year-old Jennifer Landry in Washington, D.C. and killed her a short time later in Mount Rainier, a city in Prince George's County. In 2010 and 2017, Hellum sent letters to law enforcement in Prince George's County indicating he had information on the Landry case, but he initially refused to speak to our detectives. Detectives didn't give up. They tried again to interview him in 2021, and this time he agreed. During that interview, he verbally confessed to killing Jennifer Landry and spoke about an unsolved case here in Fairfax, which ultimately led to yesterday's indictment. Last week, the Prince George's County Police Department cold case unit detectives obtained an arrest warrant for him in the Landry case as well. The families of these victims have waited a long time for answers. We all collectively hope the charges now brought against Helm provide some comfort to these families. I'm going to now welcome Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Braveboy, to make a few comments. Thank you. State's Attorney. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I would like to thank Chief Davis, Commonwealth Attorney Descano, and Chief Aziz for your remarks and also for an opportunity to be here today. This announcement is the culmination of prosecutors and police officers working together and never forgetting about our victims of violence. The fact that we are here today speaks to the importance of partnerships across borders and that requires hard work and one mission and that mission is to deliver justice. I won't speak a lot today because our office is still reviewing this case along with um, our police department. Um, as you may know, we have had some interruptions in our court uh, procedures and so our grand jury is uh, not in session at this time. However, we will continue our investigation uh, with the use uh, of our grand jury and make appropriate decisions um, at that time. I really want to thank also uh, Bob Dean, who heads our cold case uh, unit in the Prince George's County State's Attorney's Office, that their unit in, within our homicide unit. Uh, he does a phenomenal job, and I really appreciate the hard work and dedication that he gives to every case, especially uh, those that oftentimes uh, people have forgotten. But we know that the families have not forgotten. So again, thank you all for your partnership, and I look forward to continuing to work with you. Okay, uh, questions? Justin. Uh, do you have any indication that uh, the suspect may be involved in additional killings besides these three that you've laid out today? Uh, th that's certainly something that we're all exploring. Uh, you know, now we know he killed in 87. He killed twice in 2002. So we are working backwards now. Fairfax County, Prince George's County, to see if there's any other possibilities or any other murders or, or other crimes that he's been involved in. But that's certainly um, something that we're pursuing. Paul. I guess this is a question for PG, uh, Chief. Um, my understanding is that um, he was a truck driver uh, and that uh, Landry may have been last seen at a truck stop maybe in Jessup. Is that correct? 
We're going to let the cold case sergeant answer that question. Um, Mr. Landry, I'm, I'm sorry. Mr. Hellum told Fairfax County investigators that he operated a, a truck and he wanted to make that known to them that he drove a truck. Um, and he met our victim in Washington, D.C. That's where he preyed upon his women that he would, um, he would meet. Um, and that's where he met her at. And that's the reason that we um, contacted FBI Behavioral Analysis Unit to have them check across the country to see if anything that met um, his MO and any other thing that was out there was we were working with them um, in lockstep. And it, that's what seemed to work out so far. And we're still investigating things to see if anything else come up. Um, continuing. And then following up uh, with Fairfax, did Helen, was Helen's name ever a person of interest? Did his name ever come up in the uh, Adler murder? So, Paul, I too will defer to Major Ed O'Carroll, who's the Bureau Chief of our Major Crimes Bureau. Major. Yeah, Paul, thanks for asking that question. Uh, and the answer is yes. Um, Helen was talked to uh, that, uh, that very night, that very morning. Uh, so he had been uh, a person of interest. And one thing that wasn't shared maybe as an intimate detail, our cold case unit had uh, touched this file uh, prior to getting a call from PG. Uh, th this was an active cold case, and we were always anxious to put closure not only on this one, but all our unsolved homicides. Now, in your cold case website, it says that her car was found out on the Dulles Toll Road, and that she was found behind the Days Inn on, um, uh, not Chantilly Road, what's that road down? Centerville. Yeah, Centerville Road. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you know now how those two may have come together, how her car got out onto the toll road or anything like that? Yeah, so we do publicize all our cold cases, our unsolved homicides, and this was one that is up there today, and we're going to update it because it's a, it's a closure. Uh, 35 years later, you know, we stand before the community uh, to say we have, uh, we have an indictment. Um, that car was out, her car was out on the Dulles toll road. When uh, detectives that, that are, again, here today, 35 years later, uh, would, would say when they went and found her car, uh, it, it was in uh, running condition. Uh, it would appear to be, have been abandoned, almost like it was in uh, a state of uh, uh, um, being disabled, but that car did operate. And uh, there, there will probably always be some questions that are unanswered. Uh, there will always be a little bit of mystery uh, behind uh, that particular fact that's known. But 35 years ago, when our detectives found her car, uh, it started and, and operated. Uh, what caused it to stop there? What caused her to walk over uh, and ultimately be murdered? Um, you know, there's still some an unanswered questions uh, that, that hopefully we'll get uh, s some more definition to. But, but thanks for bringing up our, our cold case page, mentioning that. That's something we uh, did about 18 months ago uh, to share with our community that these cases are solvable. Uh, whether it's by the offender, you know, whether it's by evidence or witnesses coming forward. Thank you, Paul. Justin. Yeah. Yes. Did, did Helen explain why he was confessing at this point after so many years had elapsed? So when Fairfax County met Helen in uh, the jail cell, uh, he did not know we were coming. Uh, when we walked in, uh, our detective sat down with Helen. Uh, we had to say we're from Fairfax County Police cold case. Uh, so he was surprised about uh, our our particular presence, although he had made a share that he had committed a, yet another murder in Northern Virginia in the Fairfax area. Uh, we, we were prepared and ready. We knew about the case very well. Again, it came off the shelf even months prior to us, even knowing that Helen would, would make some type of share. So, uh, and we went back and visited him uh, yet on another occasion and put all the puzzle pieces together. And uh, as was shared earlier, uh, he shared things only the killer would have known, uh, and that uh, that led to the indictment yesterday. Is there anyone else? Paul. Yeah, one more. Paul. Okay. Yeah. Um, is uh, Jennifer Landry's family uh, are they still around? Uh, do they are they been notified, and do they have any response? Unfortunately, um, her parents both are deceased. She has a uh, surviving brother and sister, and she has a child also. That's um, living, 
and they have been notified. Um, they live, the sister lives in Massachusetts, where, um, where she's from, and the brother lives in Arkansas, if I'm not mistaken. But they, yes, they've been notified. If that concludes the, the questions, I just want to end acknowledging that the former Fairfax County detectives, as I'm sure the Prince George's County detectives, uh, remember Helm very, very clearly. And his path of destruction over the years has certainly had an impact on our victims and their families in our region. So to have the uh, prosecutor who prosecuted Helm in 2002 and all the Fairfax County detectives whose primary responsibility was the 87 and the 02 murders here, I think speaks volumes. And, and Paul, you probably reported on this murder in, in 02, uh, maybe even 87. Um, <laughs> so, and I mean that with all due respect, of course. But the, uh, as we all look backwards on Helm, and I'm sure that's what uh, uh, local journalists are gonna do, uh, just know that we're doing the same thing. We're, we're looking backwards as well. And, and uh, we, we want to identify any other crimes he's been involved in. So uh, thank you for your interest in the story. Uh, it's not hyperbole, but the, the DMV, the National Capital Region, our relationships are personal relationships. Uh, we, we know each other before we need each other. And when this all kind of came together from the prosecutor's offices and from the police departments, it was a, a seamless collaboration. So I, I think that uh, I ask respectfully that that, that gets highlighted in, in, in your reporting. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.